after five long years. Blast from the past with computers is back. And we're back under a whole new name. Control Alt Delete. That's right. Control Alt Delete is out for a new series name. And what better way to start the new series or the return of Control Alt Delete with history of computers. Now, yes, for some of you older viewers might might have known that I've already done this, but I thought why not redo this video for newer subscribers who have, may have not seen the original blast from the past with computers now control alt delete anyways let's get into the history of computers created in 1820s by charles babbage also known as the father of modern computers he created the mechanical computer which could only do simple calculations like solving tables of numbers like an logarithm table and it was steam driven but some go back even further to 4,000 years ago china and claim the invention of the albacus led to charles babbage creating the mechanical calculation computer now by 1830s charles made an improvement on his calculating computer dubbed the analytic engine still mechanical but this used punch cards and was able to store information as permanent memory and solve any mathematical problems. By the 1890s, we see the tabulating machine created by Herman Hollerith, who would go on to be create IBM in 1924, which today is the largest computer manufacturer in the world. But in 1890s, his computers were mechanical tabulator based on punch cards and their main purpose was to tabulate statistics, record and sort data. Now, fast forward to the 1930s. The first electronic computer, the differential analyzer, was created by Vandevar Bush. It was an analog device that had vacuum tubes to switch electrical signals to perform calculations at 25 calculations every few minutes wow 25 that's a lot 25 calculations for every few minutes was a huge improvement and a huge milestone for its days now compared to today's standards pretty slow but back in those days that was an improvement that's been unheard of and broke barriers for the world of computers Moving into 1937, how Howard Aiken wanted to make a computer that could perform calculations using large numbers, and by 1944, he succeeded in creating the Mark I with the help of none other than computer giant IBM. The Mark I was the first programmable digital computer. I mean, we do live in a digital age now, so thank you to the Mark I for creating digital. We move into 1953 with the creation of the first computer language, also known as COBOL or Cobble, which was created by Grace Harper. She was known as the first lady of software with the Cobble. With the creation of the Cobble, IBM's Thomas Johnson Watson Jr. was able to develop the IBM's 701 EDPM to help keep tabs on the Korean War the OG James Bond you know the spy with no eye hey IBM thought of it before Ian did I mean instead of 007 it's IBM 701 anyways continuing back to computers in 1958 we get the unveiling of the integrated circuit also known as a computer chip by creators Jack Kilby and Robert Noyce. The creation of the computer chip gave Jack Kilby a Nobel Prize in Physics. I mean, today you think that's kind of odd to get a Nobel Prize for a creation for a computer, but back then the computer chip was a huge development and a huge thumbs up for the world of physics. Yes, you gotta use physics, more specifically experimental physics, there are some engineering involved, but mainly 
experimental physics. So I, you could kind of see where where the Nobel community gave Jack Kilby his Nobel Prize. Now, again, back going off topic now, but going back to computers, we moved 10 years later. Yes, at this point, we've had a huge hiatus in any development in computing. And 10 years later, which would be 1968, we will get a prototype of the modern computer at the Fall Joint Computer Conference in San Francisco by Douglas Engelbart. It was called a Research Center for Augmenting Human Intelligence. Engelbart had a live demonstration of the mouse and graphical user interface, also known as the GUI. And with this marks the development of the computer for the general public. I mean, thanks to Engelbart, we all have computers in our house. Well, slowly started integrating computers into our house till now. By 1969, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs produced a UNIX or Unix operating system, which made large scale networking of diverse computing systems and the internet practical by using the C programming language. Well, we brought up the programming language and using the C. Who do we thank for that? We have to thank Grace Harper because without Grace Harper, we would not have what Bell Labs, Ken Thompson, and Dennis Ritchie creating the Unix operating system. Now, just one year later, which would be 1970, Fuji Masioka and Robert H. Bernard unveiled the first dynamic random access memory, also known as DRAM, the Intel 1103. And to this day, most computers use the Intel chip, which shows the importance of Intel. Now we go into 1973, which saw the creation of the Ethernet by Robert Metcalf, who was working at Xerox at the time. And the Ethernet was to connect multiple computers and hardwares at once, which is different than the Ethernet we saw today. We see today. Going into 1970, Atari 8080 being dubbed by Popular Electronics magazine the first mini computer kit to rival commercial models. That's right, a company just a couple years prior making a home console, the Atari 2600, is now being told by Popular Electronics they are rival rivaling commercial models with their Atari 8080. This article sparked the interest of Paul Allen and Bill Gates, who offered to write software for Atari computers and by April 4th of 1975, Paul Allen and Bill Gates left Atari to form the almighty Microsoft Computers. Another monumental year for computers is 1976 with the birth of Apple Computers with the help of or the founders Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. And the unveiling of the Apple I was their first computer. And it became the first computer with a single circuit board and read-only memory, also known as ROM. So, you can thank Apple Computers for creating ROM. By 1977, another company emerges into the ever-growing computer market, known as the Commodore. With the Personal Electronic Transactor, or PET, or PET for short, which featured a MOS or MOS 8-bit 6502 or 6502 microprocessor, which controls the screen, keyboard, and cassette player. It quickly became popular in schools and other educational markets. Another company also released a computer the same year. Radio Shack released the TRS-80 Model 1 to so much hatred being dubbed Trash 80. By the time the first West Coast Computer Fair in 1977 came around, Apple unveiled the more popular and widely known Apple II, which was a huge improvement from the Apple I with color graphics and audio cassette drive for storage. Now, just a year later in 1978, the first computerized spreadsheet program, Physicalc, 
is introduced. Very important because to this day, most businesses use a spreadsheet program in any shape, way, or form. So you got to thank Visicalc for the invention. By 1979, MicroPro founder Soymer Rubinstein created the first word processor called WordStar and it released to commercial success. It shows you how important the invention of the word processor by WordStar was. Since 1977, we haven't seen any new computers, but by 1981, that would all change with IBM's first personal computer, the Acorn. The Acorn used an MS-DOS operating system. Tells you that IBM now at this point is working with Microsoft computers. The Acorn had optional features which include the display, printer, two disk drives, extra memory, and a game adapter. Now, the Acorn retailed for $1,565, which was one of the more expensive computers for its time. Today, that would be around $4,785. Moving to 1983, the first personal computer with a GUI was released. What computer had GUI? That's right, that was the Apple Lisa, created by Apple. Also the same year, we saw the birth of the laptop, Javelon SC. By 1984, the most monumental moment in computers went down at the Super Bowl with the iconic Macintosh computers. For anyone who grew up in that era will remember the commercial. And On January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. And you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Now, seeing the Apple Lisa in by 1985, Microsoft releases Windows. Also in 1985, Commodore releases the Amiga 1000. Now we move into 1989, which would be the year that changed society as we know it. Thanks to Tim Berner Lee's proposal of the world wide web. That's right, 1989. Now, if you backtrack to this video, the internet was actually in, created way back in the late 60s. So you could see how using the internet and very quickly, Tim Berner Lee would create the world wide web also known as www dot this shows the creation of the hypertext markup language or html which is a program that the built the web going into 1993 the pentium microprocessor allowed for music to be on computers now you can listen to music on your computers anytime you want now let's move to the summer of 1995 with the release of Windows 95. The first operating software with a drop down menu and so many different features that prior operating systems never had. Going into 1999, the Wi-Fi is developed and it covered a distance of 300 feet. Yes, the Wi-Fi, 1999. Now, in the new millennium, we saw Windows Me and Windows 2000, which Windows Me flopped and 
day because it was mostly a business computer or a business operating system. And by 2001, the Mac OS was released with 16 different versions. Also, the Mac versus PC ads were dominating with the Mac getting a bit more su superior at the time. Also in 2001, Microsoft released the Windows XP, which moved away from MS-DOS and was the most used operating system till 2014 when Microsoft stopped all support. Now we go backwards again to 2003. We saw the first 64-bit processor by ADM called the Athlon 64. In 2004, Microsoft saw the competition with web browser thanks to Mozilla releasing the Firefox 1.0 and within five years it exceeded a billion downloads. Continuing on in 2006, Apple created their first Intel based dual core computer dubbed the MacBook Pro and to this day their most successful line of computers. And by 2010 we see the birth of the tablet with the iPad and then 2011, Google released their first computer, a Chromebook, which was running Google Chrome OS, thanks to their purchase of Android softwares. Now today, computers are everywhere, whether it's a desktop, a laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone. There is no denying computers change the world. Some say for the better and others say for the worse. What do you say? Certainly, a lot of things would not have existed had computers not. Who knows what kind of world we would have been without computers. I certainly wouldn't want to know. Anyways, we are back and we'd like to thank you for watching the return. If you'd like to see more computer history and computer videos, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell button to be notified when we upload more videos. Any topics that you'd like me to talk about regarding computers, comment down below. This has been Control-Alt-Delete.